for sample problem number 8, 2 12 inches, 20.7 pound channels, all right, are latticed together to form the section shown in the figure. All right. There are two 12 inches, 20.7 pound channels. So the uh, these channels, no, that is being mentioned here in the problem, um, are these two, ano, uh, these two uh, uh, figure, no. So this is a channel, no. This is a channel. So these are two channels. They are latticed together to form the section shown in the figure. So this is the, ano, ha, the the section. All right, of the two channels lat lattice together. All right, so we are asked here to determine how far apart the channel should be placed so as to make I sub bar X equal to I sub bar Y for the section. Refer to the table. Neglect the lattice bars, which are indicated by the dash line. So we are going to neglect this ano ha, dash lines here. Now, this is actually the lattice bars no, where uh, these two channels are latticed together. No? So Plus, uh, from here, um, the data, all right, for these channels, okay, is um is given here. No, so this is the table, no, uh, giving the data, all right, for um the channels, no, that we have here. So these are ano, ha, two identical channels, no, these two uh, channels here, they are identical, and for each channel, all right. So this is the ano. The table. So this is a 12 inch, 20.7 pound channel. So here at the table, no, here is the ano, 12 inches, 20.7 pound channel. So this is the ano, ha, this is just for one piece of channel class, ha. So the data for its area is this. So it's already given, no, no need to determine anymore, no, the area, no, of this, ano, of this channel because it's already given here, no, in the in the table. So this is actually 6.03 inches square, no. That's the area directly, and then, um, its eccentroidal moment of inertia. So this eccentroidal moment of inertia, this is reference to this axis. Okay, this is the uh, eccentroidal axis, right, for this channel. And then uh, its y centroidal axis is this. So this x centroidal moment of inertia and y centroidal moment of inertia, they are reference to this axis, x sub o and y sub o. All right. So from here also, the coordinates okay, of the centroid of this channel is also given here. So let's say the centroid of this channel is located somewhere here. Okay. So... Um, it's X bar, no, this X bar, this is measured from the left side, okay, of the channel. So this is X bar and the X bar, the value of X bar is this, 0 0.70. By the way, the value of uh, X centroidal and Y centroidal moment of inertia are 128.1 and 3.9. So the, the unit for this obviously is inches to the fourth, ha? both for this and the moment of inertia. And then for this X bar and Y bar, this is in inches. All right. So for the X bar, this is 0 0.70 inches. So this is 0 0.70 inches, right? This X bar, no, from the left side of the channel. And then for your Y bar, um, uh, it's not ano, no? Bakit hindi siya nakapakita dito kung nasan yung Y bar? I mean, kung saan sinukat. Pero actually, ito naman din kasing Y bar natin class pala. Ah, by the way, class yung Y bar pala kasi natin class, no? Yung centroid kasi natin, di ba nandito? Tama. So, yung Y bar natin, mm, okay, kumbaga, dyan na rin siya minesure. No? Dyan na yung ginawang reference axis. No? Dito sa axis na to, kung saan sinukat yung Y bar. That's why it's zero here. And I think we won't need this, ano kasi, Y bar. No? So, hmm. All right. Anyway, sige, sige. So, from here, class, uh, we can... Uh, go back to the ano, to the problem no again uh, for this problem we are asked to determine how apart okay the channel should be placed as to make i sub bar x equal to i sub bar y this is actually um similar to the sample problem that we solved earlier right so the condition here the i bar sub x should be equal to i bar sub y so this is the moment of inertia of this ano ha 
two channels combined together or lattice together. We are considering this composite ano, kumbaga figure. All right? And our reference axis for this two moment of inertia are this axis, this x sub o and this y sub o. All right, sige. So let's ano, let's start solving this class. So let's start uh, again uh, the the what we are going to determine here class is the distance we have, the space between these two channels. So again we have this uh, condition that i bar sub x should be equal to i bar sub y. Okay, so let's start with ano, i bar sub x. So we are going to determine the moment of inertia of this composite figure, okay, or areas with respect to this x sub o. All right, so for our formula again plus for uh, moment of inertia, okay, it will just be the uh, summation, all right, of the um, excentroidal moment of inertia of each area plus their transfer term, no, if needed. So in this case, okay, so let's first consider the, uh, let's say this uh, channel. So for this channel, its centroid is actually somewhere here, right? So for each piece, right, for each uh, for each uh, channel, so the 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 centroid is just at the uh, no, no at the center no, of this uh, no, channel. So uh, its uh, no, uh, centroid actually is somewhere here, right? But as you can see, the centroid actually coincides no with the reference x sub o, right? So meaning um, there will be no um, distance d here class, no? So we don't need to add a transfer term here, as you can see, if you, if you are going to get the uh, excentroidal moment of inertia of this channel. And again, plus the excentroidal moment of inertia of this channel is given here at the table. So its excentroidal moment of inertia is already 128.1. So you can just write that here right away. That will be 128.1. And then for its, uh, again, uh, transfer term, uh, there will be no distance D, right? There will be no distance D, is that correct? Are you following that? There will be no distance D since your reference axis, right, is coinciding with the centroid, okay, of the channel that we're considering here. And in this case, class, these two channels are identical. So we can actually just multiply it by two. No, the excentroidal moment of inertia also of this ano uh, of this area two will just be the same, right? So okay, so this will be equated to the y centroidal moment of inertia of these two channels. So let's say we consider this ano uh, a uh, first channel, okay? So it's y, okay? So let's just write this here. So this will just also be summation of the y centroidal moment of inertia, and if needed, we are going to add a transfer term. So for this, the y centroidal moment of inertia of this channel, now we are considering just this channel, let's say, so this is 3.9. All right, so this is 3.9. And then, okay, um, our reference axis here, take note, is this axis, huh? y centroidal axis. So for the centroid, okay, of this channel, let's say, okay, the, its centroid is somewhere here, located somewhere here. Class, there will be a distance d, right? There will be a distance d for this. Uh, let's say this is distance one, right? From the centroid of this channel going to the reference axis. So what will be this? This what will be this distance d? So class, this distance d will just be uh, this distance is actually half of d d over 2, right? This is distance D. This is the, ano, the distance no, between the two channels, tama, the distance D. So this is just half, this distance, right? And we have to add this distance, okay? And actually, class, this distance, as you can see in the uh, data for one piece of channel, all right? So from the left side, okay, of the channel going to its centroid, it is measured as X bar. Right, and its x bar is 0 0.70. So meaning this is 0 0.70. Now from the left side of the channel going to the centroid. Plus, are you following? Are you following? Do you follow? Okay, gala. All right. So from here, uh, 
Okay, so let's add here the transfer term. So the area, okay, we need here the area of this channel. The area of this channel is also given. This is 6.03, right? So this will be 6.03. And our distance D here class, in this case, okay, uh, let's say this is distance 1. Okay, so our distance 1 here class is just D over 2 plus 0 0.70. Is that correct? So this will be D over 2 plus 0 0.70 squared. Class, are you following? Following, following, following. Are you following? <laughs> All right, anyway, see guys. So for this uh, problem class, no? So we can now solve, no, for this distance D. So you can input this in your calculator class to solve for the distance D. So inputting this in your calculator, so this will be... Ah, by the way, you have to multiply this also by 2. Right, because we have your two channels. Now the what we considered earlier is just this channel, right? So we also have to consider this. So we have to multiply it by two. Actually, uh, since both sides have two, you can actually cancel that na lang eh. Ama. But anyway, okay. So input this in your calculator. There will be two values for this since we have here. Uh, there will be this square here, no? So the uh, answer or the for the there will be one positive answer and one negative answer. The negative answer is actually 10.47679. And then the positive one. So before you ship solve, no, input a positive value. No, and then before pressing equal. So press equal. So the positive answer here is 7.67679. Plus, were you able to get this in your calculator? All right. So again, class, if there are two values here, choose the logical one. So the logical here, class, is the positive uh, no, no answer. Ah, by the way, don't forget the unit. The unit for this is inches. Inches. Okay, so this is already the answer for this. 